At Apple, we are focused on creating innovative products and experiences. Netflix kicked off big tech's earnings by reporting a surge in subscribers. Google, we actually do have the ability to make more of an impact on people. Our company is now Meta. Good morning. Let me show you what we've been working on. We're going to take a couple of minutes to walk you through how we hire at Google for Facebook all of our jobs. Facebook is one of the most used products really in the history of the world. To do the best I decided to join Amazon because back in college, I was really interested in both uh, My name is science Malone. and business. I'm a graduate in here. Hey everybody, how's it going? My name is Mayuko and I'm a former software engineer turned content creator. Before YouTube, I worked in Silicon Valley building iOS apps. My journey with technology started when I declared my major in college to computer science. I was looking for a job where I could be financially stable after college and CS was the quickest way for me to get there while being able to apply my skills to a breadth of different companies, products, and problems, and to help people with technology. I remember in college, like somewhere around sophomore and junior year, when you start planning about life after college, there were a handful of companies that everybody wanted to work at. Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, and Google. Otherwise called Fang or Mang, now that Facebook is called Meta? I don't know, yeah, like whatever the new acronym is. Throughout my career, it felt like getting a job at one of these like large, successful companies was like the thing to do. If you're an actor, you go to Hollywood. And if you're a software engineer, you get a job at a Fang company. It was almost seen as like a rite of passage. Like once you landed that Fang job, people thought you were legit and then you had kind of like made it. I remember when any one of my college classmates got a job at one of those companies, people would find out and like their popularity status was sore at school. And even in the 2010 edition of Cracking the Coding Interview, basically the de facto study guide for software engineering interviews, each big tech company is called out about what makes their interview process unique. It's also in the newest edition too. And it kind of makes you think like, yeah, maybe you should interview at these companies because they're the ones specifically called out in the guide. And honestly, despite all that, I was never like super pulled to want to work at a fan company. I'd heard things about the work culture at each and it just didn't really seem like it would be a great fit for me. I'm someone who'd rather like collaborate with someone over competing with them. I also don't do super well with like work stress. And honestly, like I heard the technical interviews were so hard that I didn't even really want to try. Of course, throughout my career, the image of big tech has changed drastically too which kind of all the more gave me the reason to like not want to work there. Things like election interference, spreading misinformation and enabling conspiracies, taking part in genocides and violating antitrust laws. But I still hear all the time how these are the most sought after employers in the tech industry. And you know, eventually I did actually end up at a fan company. I worked at Netflix for a little over a year after wanting a change of pace from the startup world. And I happened to find a great match with my team and my manager, which mattered the most to me in finding my new role. It didn't really matter to me that the company belonged to Fang necessarily. So looking back at my own journey and talking to those who are just getting started in theirs, I couldn't help but wonder, why do people want to work at Fang companies? I knew my own reasons for why I did slash didn't want to work at Fang, but what were other people's reasons? I mean, there are so many different job opportunities in the tech industry, so much so that tech employees usually switch jobs every one to two years on average. So similar to my video that I did about Japan's tech industry, I decided to do my own research. I read articles, papers, and talked to people from lots of different backgrounds, all at a different point in their career journey. And it basically came down to three reasons, the pay and perks, prestige, and the caliber. And just a heads up, this video, along with really all of my videos, contains my subjective and qualitative findings, so none of the things presented here are gonna be like objective or unbiased or anything like that. Basically, I am human and these are my thoughts. Yes, the money that you get from working at a fan company is good. I'm guessing that a lot of people are wanting it to build things like generational wealth and financial stability, and heck, maybe even rise through an economic class in the United States. In a world where things are only getting more expensive and the gap between the wealthy and the poor is only getting wider, 
Getting the pay that you do at Fang, I thought, would be key in helping to build things like generational wealth and possibly break through socioeconomic classes. Which, I certainly think that's true. But when it came down to like the real, honest, personal reasons for why, the things that like pay and perks enable for a lot of folks is stability. One thing I had one plus about Google, especially the team I was on, it had a great work-life balance. So I was able to get my job done, but then be home with my son um, on top of the great pay and the benefits. Like after graduation, my main concern was really just getting a job that can provide financial stability. For me personally, at the time, because I didn't have any internships and I didn't really have any background up until of like tech up until that last year, I was really just wanting to find a job. And so whatever job that could provide that financial stability, that was really like my main goal for me to live a decent life, decent, comfortable life. I didn't have much growing up. Obviously, like we, we had enough to get by and even small luxuries here and there. Both of my parents were working and they would be up late and we had to like ask other family members to help take care of me and my sister. There are times when like we also had to kind of look out for ourselves and kind of just be careful a little bit, especially because my parents also, I guess that's another value is like to be frugal with your money, make sure that you only spend where you need to spend. I don't, I guess I, I wanted to have a life that didn't feel like I had to be, I guess, too cautious with my choices where like, if I have to make an emergency decision to do something, I'm not um, at the losing end. Like I'm able to kind of just recover real quickly or just like not worry about anything. And then also like for me, like I want to help out my parents once like I have a, a, enough money, you know, I pay off all my debt and stuff. I want to make sure that I'm able to provide for like my parents. And then especially uh, whenever I decide to have a family, I want to be able to provide for them. So financial stability, life stability, job stability are all things that people in and outside of tech need, obviously. When we think about what overall has contributed to that, economists look towards things like the 2008 financial crash, and obviously COVID in the last two years has had many of us re-examine what we truly need to survive. And you know, I found that in a survey that I put out to a lot of people, younger folks or people who are earlier in their careers as software engineers are more likely to want to work at FANG because it's a one-way ticket to stability. Which makes sense because if you're in your younger years or you're just trying to become independent, then you need the money to build stability in your life. Granted, even with these really high salaries, I will say that if you're gonna live and work in the Bay Area, it's not exactly super life-changing. And that's because, to no surprise, the cost of living is incredibly high. So yes, in this whole thing, pay is a really large component, but perks are too. Things like work visas to be able to live and work in the United States. Work visas take like money, time, and resources from a company to work with the US government to get. So it makes sense that these like really big companies that have a lot of money and resources are more willing to sponsor. And while we're talking about perks, a lot of these big tech companies have really nice amenities in their office for their employees to use. But I will say that no one really mentioned that as like their primary reason for wanting to work at Fang. For sure you get like all these perks, right? You get paid well, you get food, you get ping pong tables, whatever. I think maybe it, it might be something that's influenced during college. Like let's say you're a freshman, you're taking your classes and you have like a junior who just came back from like a Facebook internship and they talk about like how much money they made, what the experience was like, all the swag that they got. And so that kind of leaves a, a mark on you as like a freshman, you know, student. And you're just like, oh, wow, that sounds like a good place to be like. So, I don't know about you, but when I was in high school and choosing which college to attend, prestige mattered. Even though I didn't know as much about the world back then as I do now, I did know that the name of the college could play a huge factor in my future. I mean, people just look at those who went to an Ivy League school differently. And Fang also has this kind of air of prestige too. I mean, these are the world's top tech companies. They make a lot of money and they have a really big impact. And so people look at you differently when you've got X Fang in your Twitter or LinkedIn bio or your resume. Honestly, I was just like so excited to put the X Googler in my Twitter bio just because that has its own prestige and hype to it. So. <laughs> And yeah, honestly, I've seen this in my own experience. I used to get comments questioning the validity of my software engineering skills all the time on my videos. 
But after I revealed that I worked at Netflix to my audience, those comments all but disappeared and people started calling me ex-Netflix engineer Mayuko and they just treated me differently. So working at a fan company is kind of like getting another chance at getting into an Ivy League school. If anything, it's probably better because you can apply to Fang many times throughout your career. Oh, hey there. Enjoying the video? Good. Well, I'm just here to tell you that in case you're someone who's looking to land a job at a fan company, then I've got an incredible interview resource for you. Interviewing.io is a sponsor of today's video, and they conduct realistic coding interviews led by senior software engineers who will give you detailed feedback about what you need to work on in order to land that fang job. They have the largest network of vetted and experienced tech interviewers in the world, so you can book an interview with as little as 24 hours notice. The best part? You don't pay anything until you're hired. So click the link in the description box for more details. Thank you, interviewing.io, for sponsoring, and now let's get back into the video. So then why is the prestige important anyways? Is that based on like someone else's personal values that like maybe they want the recognition or does it go deeper than that? Having one of these top companies that are very well renowned on my resume and as an experience will then help me land better roles at other companies in the future. So I know at some point I wanna try working for a startup and kind of see what that environment is like, but I feel like that would be easier once I've had this experience at a big major tech company. And something that I've noticed that's really interesting that I've heard from a lot of people is that a lot of them will choose to take their return offers from a fan company and they'll say things like, oh, I know I only want to work here for like one to three years to like gain the experience and like the title. Um, because I think being able to say like X Google or like X Facebook is still like mean a lot in the industry. Like it still holds a lot of weight. Just because it's easier to know that Fang and Microsoft and like all those companies that are like the top dogs, they've already established their presence in the technology space. And because they have that establishment, it's easy to look for opportunities to grow and just to be like, okay, I was able to do this. I am I am the stuff. I was able to prove myself, prove, prove my own self-worth. What Fang does with its prestige for individual people is that it brings a sense of legitimacy to your skills. Having it on your resume is kind of like a stamp of approval of some sorts that generally a lot of people value. It's the name thing. For me, again, I, I feel like it can open more doors and people can be kind of more trusting, I guess, of just like the knowledge that anyone with the X in their name can put out just because they got that stamp in. I worked here here, but you know, I moved on. Like imagine you're looking for a job and you come across two different startups and you're just trying to get a sense of who they are and kind of suss them out. One has leaders who have prior Fang experience versus one without. How would you feel about the one with X Fang leaders versus the one without? The answer is probably actually gonna look different for everybody, but I think that most of us can agree, regardless of whether like the fairness and validity of using XFang as a measuring stick is valid, that it can just help to have Fang on your resume. Especially so if you're out there trying to prove yourself. Maybe you're a new grad who's trying to differentiate themselves from their peers and you're trying to prove that you deserve a seat at the table. Or maybe it's because you're a minority in tech and because you don't look like the majority, people don't automatically trust that you have great skills, unfortunately. I am a black woman that programs. So yeah, I mean, this is the uh, industry that's dominated by white men and I'm the complete opposite of that. So I always feel like I have to do a little bit extra, prove myself a little bit more to get an ounce of the same respect. When you get that legitimacy through prestige, then it opens up new doors in the long term. And if in the future you come across an opportunity that you really want to pursue, then that prestige can help you to get that and do what you want in life. So if you ask a random person that you know, regardless of whether they're in or out of tech, I'm willing to bet that they know all of the companies in the acronym. Again, they're some of the most prestigious companies in the tech industry. They've become common household names because of the huge impact they've had on our society. Facebook changed the way we connect with others. Amazon changed how we shop. Apple changed our relationship with their devices and Netflix changed the TVs and movies we watched. And of course, Google defined how we use the internet. When it comes to software engineers, whose entire job is about curiosity and problem solving and learning how things work, I think working at Fang is like a really enticing Rubik's cube to solve. That's kind of the reason I started loving development to begin with because I realized 
with doing something as simple as making code on a, on a text editor like VS Code, like you can build these products that literally change the world. It's almost like a superpower, really, because like you feel like you can literally do whatever you want if you if you're imagined enough, if you're creative enough, or if you are in tune enough to what society needs. You can create a product that can change the world, and that's kind of why I, that's one reason why I fell in love with uh, coding and software development to begin with. Eventually, you can't help but wonder how these companies got so big, so ubiquitous, and so successful over time. I think just the curious curiosity takes over. I'm, I'm the type of person that like, I, if you present to me like the fundamental theorem of calculus or something, I ask you to like, can you prove that to me? Why does that exist? I am a fan of working at a large organization because it's more people to interact, more people like, to get to know, right? The, the whole connections point. And I would also consider Meta as a place too, is because when Facebook rebranded as from, from just being Facebook to Meta, uh, it really essentially expanded their identity, right? Like they um, want to go into different space. If I had the opportunity, I I'd want to be a part of that journey to like see how do they make those connections in um, slightly different spaces, but still with people, but um, for a different purpose and different context. There's a saying that you should work with people who are smarter than you mostly to help you grow in your own skill set, And so that you have a learning rich environment. And interestingly, I found that in my interviews, the further along in your tech career you are, the more you're gonna prioritize things like growth and learning opportunities and curiosity as a top reason for how you're gonna make an employment decision. And there's definitely the image that the people who work at these companies are high caliber. I mean, at the very least, they all pass the really difficult technical interview process after all. Which, in my opinion, I feel like that's just like one type of assessment for one type of smartness in a technical interview but we can get into that in another video. Anyway, why do all of these things matter? We found the answers to why people want to work at these companies at an external level, the pay and perks, the prestige, and the caliber. But why do people care about these things? What are the fundamental values and perspectives that lead you to one company over the other? And what are the real, honest, like personal reasons why people want to work at Fang? Well, it's because people want to work somewhere they care about. With COVID and the many big world events that happened before that and personal life events and lessons that we learn throughout our lives, we learn what matters to us and we take steps to make things a reality, to live the way that we want. We see this in the Great Resignation, a movement where millions of people are quitting their existing jobs to find better ones that suit them. We find out how we want to spend our time and who we want to spend it with and try to make our limited time as human beings as meaningful as possible. I don't want to be a fake person to myself. I want to be someone who is genuine in all aspects of my life, whether that be my personal relationships with my fiance or with my friends or with my family and also with my job because if i don't if i work for a company that doesn't align with like what my mission and vision in my own life is i feel like i'm going farther and farther away from like the mission and vision of my life i guess talking to people who are older than me they would say a lot like oh this is what you spend like 40 hours a week doing and so like you might as well hopefully enjoy like a little bit part of it working on projects that i feel like i'm making a difference at so i've worked at companies where I felt like I wasn't doing anything. I was just sitting there and when I did stuff, it would never translate to like the final product. So I don't want to be wasting time. So <clears throat> and it's kind of uh, when you're in that experience of just sitting there and trying to find stuff to do and kill time, it really kind of gets to you. And you're just looking at the clock all day and what you want the most is to, you know, leave and go do your own thing, so. Obviously, every individual person has different needs to do life, and that also changes throughout our lives. For some, our jobs are there to enable us to live, and so it doesn't matter too much what you work on, so long as it doesn't compromise your own values too much. But I think the balance starts to shift when we move forward in life, as we get older and big life and world events happen, and we realize we're not invincible, that we place more importance on finding meaning and purpose in our work. A lot of us in the tech industry have the privilege to choose where we want to work, so why not take that opportunity and find something that we like? Chances are we're going to do better at our job, learn more, and have so much more fun along the way. And you know, for some people, Fang is where they want to go. So why the heck do people want to work at Fang? Well, it all kind of depends. 
Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you liked it. I just want to say a quick thank you to everybody I interviewed for this video. Really appreciate your time and energy. Also want to say thank you to my research advisors who helped me to get unstuck and figure out what the heck I'm doing. Make sure to subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this because I'm going to be doing more of these in the future. So I'll see you very soon.